Thank you, Brent. Welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, coming to you live from Fender Hollywood. And uh, we're going to talk about building speed on guitar, OK? So we're going to get you to where you can start playing songs at any tempo that you choose. It's an evolution. We're going to uh, show you how to take those first steps. And if you're already playing fast, a couple of helpful hints to get you playing even faster. It's a lot of fun. And helping me with today's subject is the doctor himself. The doctor is in, Dr. Dylan Calajuri. <laughs> now, he's both my guest and my co-host. So are you ready to wear two hats? I don't own a single hat. Okay. Yeah. All right. First rule of improv. Bad start. Never okay. deny. Okay. Um, hello to our viewers, by the way, from Ireland and England. And th uh, thank you for staying up, especially Martin yes. Baum. I see you out there. And also, we have folks from Australia and Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Abrigado. Thank you for being there uh, with us. Now, um, uh, today's techniques are great for electric and acoustic guitar, as always. And we have stuff for beginners and the more advanced students. So we have, it's going to make this accessible for everybody. Also, we're going to tell you how to win some free gear. Stick around. It might be your day. Uh, and also, um, if, if, if it's your first time watching the show, then let us know in the comment section and we'll get a little shout out to you. Everybody can give you a little round of applause. So, so uh, you know, thank you for joining us, that sort of stuff. Now, Dylan, let's talk about some gear really quickly because you have something you apparently rescued from a, a barn. That's it. I'm thinking in Amish country from the late 1700s. That's right. Now, listen, this is uh, this is the Charvel SC1. So mm -hmm. it's the, so the SoCal guitar. It's a Charvel. Oh. Okay. Uh, a, fa a family company of Fender. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a signature limited edition Hendrick Don Haga. You got it! How was that? You got it, guys! Right. Now, hey, so it is an electric guitar. It, it's white relic. So extra re relic, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, this, uh, hey, listen. What? Don't, if you're not ready, don't. I'm listening, you're not playing. Okay, it. now. Oh. Oh. I mean, this thing. <laughs> This thing, it did that to me. So this is actually, this guitar sounds really good, and you're gonna get to hear it in all of its uh, glory in a moment. All of so. its splintered glory. Yeah, there. sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm playing. This is actually a personal guitar of mine that was thrown together somewhere in 1999. So um, it's essentially an American parts strat, if you will. Uh, and I still don't even know what the pickups are on this thing. Uh, as far as I know, they're just standard uh, strat pickups. But. <laughs> Strat hey. All right, and now I'm already out of tune. So, oh, thank you very, very much. So, um, let's, uh, now we're going to be using songs from Fender Play, uh, a couple of songs, but most of, of today's show is really about technique, and we have some specific lessons uh, that will help you further your goal. So you'll find the links where you normally find them. As always, if you have questions about today's topic, drop them in the comments. We'd love to help you out. Uh, but we're really going to lean on Dylan today. He's the expert. Uh, Dylan, uh, how, what, what's all this about? How do we you know, get our good fret friends here to build speed in just five days? All right, so uh, this is something that having uh, worked for Fender Play for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, you get to see people who are on path and they're getting a lot out of this sort of quantifiable program, right? And uh, for, for those who are sort of meandering around and trying different things a la carte, which is a great way to learn too, mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a way to supplement what you're doing. A more build focused speed. approach. Exactly. So this is one approach. Uh, you know, they say, how do I go to the gym and get strong? It's like, pick a program, right? Right, just and then do something. Do something <laughs> and do it consistently and measure your, your results. So this is five ways for you to build speed in five days. Three to five minutes a day. If you got a little bit more time, great. If not, uh, that'll do it. Right, so we're not talking about taking a huge chunk of your, of your right. practice time. We're just adding a few minutes to it. Also, um, you know, we're, talking about, we're not necessarily talking about playing speed metal. You can. No, 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 no. But we're also, even if you're a beginner, and it's just a matter of, of getting your single note, you know, runs together a little more smoothly, again, slow becomes smooth, then smooth becomes fast. This is something I tell my students all the time. By the way, can I borrow the tuner? Yeah, and, you know, this is, a, this is about empowering people, Thanks, especially new learners, uh, to build speed, but also if, I, I promise you, if you have been playing guitar for a while, this is going to benefit you as well. So, uh, day one of this, if you guys are ready for day, day one. one, day uno, day one. Oh, look, okay, yeah, day That's one. It. Okay, so go ahead. Day Sorry. one. So, day one is based on a, a, a principle that you may recognize if you're in Fender Play. It's it's what's called chromatic form warm up or warm up on one, two, three, four strings, right? So, if you're new to guitar, this is going to look uh, like it does in Fender Play, which is yeah. You're basically trying to use each finger 
kind of for the first time, because that's a new concept when you're mm -hmm. new. Get those notes, get them strong, get them clean, one after another. We'll talk about the timing in just a minute. Uh, so you can definitely do this, and then as you're, as you're moving on, you're trying to do it on every single string, right? And eventually adding what's called alternate picking. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, you're probably starting with just down picking. And that's enough. Now, if you're advanced, there's two things I want you to run out with this. So at the fifth fret, just the standard up and down of this, right? Try skipping a string every other note. <laughs> and finally, skip over an entire string. That sounds like an old sci-fi show when the computer's trying to spit something Listen, out. your plants are going to grow backwards from this. Oh, is that this is, yeah, this can oh, have a like lot a of cactus. consequences. You might want to do it outside. Cool. Uh, but no, this is a great way to work on a lot of different techniques at once. So if you're a beginner, I encourage you to try warm up on one, two. The chromatic warm up. Exactly. Uh, and if you are if you're been playing for a while, this exercise never ends. Why is that? No, well, because it, you can always make it harder. You can start oh, yeah. two, one, three, four, two. Uh, you can really just continue on. And then I assume they use a metronome just to make sure we're staying yeah, on Yeah, funny time. story about that. I, that. We have a buddy that's going to, from an old Fender play. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a, a while back, our, our friend Corey Wong came on uh, on an episode, and, and I thought he did a, a, a just a beautiful demonstration on how to use a metronome where he sets it for just one tempo, but then he gets multiple exercises out of it. And so I thought that was, it, 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 uh, I knew we were going to be talking about this, and that clip came to mind. Derek, can you run, can you uh, bring our, our good buddy Corey into the show now? Watch this, everyone. Here's here's a metronome at 120 beats per minute, and I'm just gonna play that kind of E7 thing that I was doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever. I'm playing at 120 beats per minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself half the amount of accountability with the metronome. And what it does is it makes my mental awareness have to focus in twice as hard. Interesting. Because although I had an accountability point on every quarter note right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Every quarter note that hits, I hear and make micro adjustments on whether I'm a little bit ahead or a little bit behind, right? That's right. kind of how we learn to play with a metronome. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away beats one and three. And the reason hmm. why I take away beats one and three is because I think of it like the snare drum. Right, right. So I'm gonna play the exact same thing. The physicality part of my execution is the ex exact same. My mental awareness, my mental focus now has to be double because I have half the amount of accountability. Mm. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Mm. So I'm playing the exact same thing as far as the physical realm, but as far as my mental awareness goes and my focus goes, I have to be twice as locked in. Perfectly done. Thank you so much, Corey. Yeah. It's great to see you again. Now, um, by, by the way, this, that clip exists on the Fender Play site, by the way. So if you want to revisit that, you can find it there. I love what he does with, with the Metro there, especially when he talks about it being like the snare. You talk a lot about listening for parts. That really helps you out. We already have some questions here. Uh, from uh, John Nichols or Knuckles on YouTube. Sorry, any tips on getting my fingers, mainly my pinky, to spread out? Yeah. Thanks for the info. Much That's appreciated. I have questions. Uh, students ask us too. I try yeah. to get get that pinky involved. What's the tip there? So, I, w with an opening disclaimer of your anatomy begins to form your sound right out of the beginning. Oh, good so point. there's been a lot of players throughout history that had difficulties with a finger or with a wrist. Django Reinhardt only had two available because uh, they got the other two got burned in a fire. Uh, Tony Iommi. We can, and oh, yeah, so those are just people that got things taken away. I mean, there's just people who who, who developed a claw or had to. <laughs> so uh -huh. don't be dismayed by your anatomy when you're playing. Okay. Like, lean into your anatomy. If okay. Anything. But in terms of just your approach to how you're grabbing the neck, I would grab with my thumb in the middle of the back of the neck because you have the furthest amount of uh, range of motion in both mm -hmm. directions. And set out from there. And then as you need to make adjustments to be able to reach your pinky out, mm -hmm. you might find, oh, you know, my thumb works a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Oh, I see. So some experimentation with that. Well, that's a good that's tip. A way to roll. And um, using the metronome to sort of quantify uh, where your thumb can sit, where you can do this in real time is a great play. And 
uh, playing with a metronome on, on Fender Play is a great way to get at that. Th uh, thank you, Dylan. Before we get to day two, on Facebook, Jay Frocky is, is, is asking, is it better to work on the speed or slow down and play the chord correctly? I, I advise play the chord correctly, otherwise that'll slow down. <laughs> You'll never get to the speed part, but that's just my, my take. What, what do you say? Yeah, you know, I mean, at some point, it's always gonna be order and chaos, right? So the orderly approach is to make sure that every single note of the chord is ringing in its truest form. But I'm sure like the most tactile player in the world could find something wrong with that even. So it's like, at some point you have to say, okay, I'm just gonna go for it. It's gotta be good enough. Yeah, so, so find where your middle ground is and, and find where if too much repetition of trying to get it perfect is holding you back from building some speed, build some speed. Yeah. And you, yeah, you'll make the corrections. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll fix it. So, they'll do, okay, a little bit. let's go to day two. Day two. Ah. Day two. ah, there you go, that a boy. All right, day two. So um, now it seems, <laughs> wait a minute, Derek, it seems as though scales exist for the purpose of practice. Dylan, why is that? Yeah, so I mean scales, are, for, for a lot of reasons, without getting too far into what scales do musically, they allow us to take something that's a pattern, especially on guitar, mm -hmm. and repeat it over and over again until we get better at it, right? So similar to the way a chord looks. So uh, if you're a beginner, the pentatonic scale is the most heard scale in music. We've talked about this yeah, that's right. on many Fender Play mm -hmm. episodes, which you can watch. But uh, if you're a beginner, there is the G major pentatonic scale in open position on Fender Play. You can check out, or you can look here. I would take the first three strings and be able to play through those Believe it or not, I know that may seem like boring in the beginning, but it's about, this is at the chopping wood. But we actually backyard. teach like riffs and solos based on just what you played You're there. You're gonna open the Pandora's side, box. On the, on the Fender play side. That's right, <laughs> that's right. All right, I'm oh, sorry, continue. Well, no, no, uh, you know, lean into the fact that uh, this is challenging in the beginning and realize that, uh, that you're gonna be able to do this. Yeah. You're gonna be able to do it. And if you've been playing for a little while, head up to the fifth fret and I'm gonna enlist uh, Eugene for this. Okay, so oh, shoot. I, I, head up to the fifth fret, play the pentatonic scale in the key of A. Okay, that's nice, right? It has a lot of application. Next step might be to add some sequences. Sequences are when you have a pattern and you repeat the pattern. Mm -hmm. It could be any pattern, but let's go with a six note pattern for now. So, uh, right, so six notes of the scale and I'm heading down the scale. Now let's say we add the tune app into, into this. So this is the Fender tune app. I'm gonna use the metronome on here. Could of course use a drum, a drum set or one of the drum beats that's on there too. So let's try this as eighth notes. That's gonna be two notes per beat. Ready, go. Okay, so if you got that down now, I know you said I'm really good. I got all this down. All right, hey, okay, all right. What? Six tuplets. Come on. Ha! All right, let's try it. Here we go. Uh, uh, Once you. Ready, go. I can't. I can't. Right, one more time. Ready, go. There we go. It helps if you make this face. Oh, you gonna go up? Or if you like, if you wanna look like you ate a bad radish or something like that. <laughs> and that really does improve your playing. There's science behind that statement. Okay, but, but the radish? I'm not sure who the science, uh, we should move on. We should move on. The, it was uh, scientist. Day three. Donhaga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so we're moving on. Uh, by the way, Eric Lindsay is saying, are these tips apl applicable to bass? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Yep. yep. Uh, you, you definitely want to be able to play uh, real nice and clean and smooth from note to note, especially when you're doing those those bass walks, those shuffle walks, yeah. and those scales. Big, big, big. Yeah. Yeah. That really, really helps. Uh, these are confidence builders, honestly. Yeah. You work on speed and you work on technique, and you have confidence when you go to play something, and especially with other people. Yeah, and Mary's asking best tips for coordinating two hands when you're picking strings. Oh, Mary, you well, this actually, this yeah. will, this will, uh, we're gonna get to actually the next three days are kind of about that, really. Yep. So day three, oh, it's already there. Hey, way to go, Aces. Um, all right, legato is a lovely word to say, but what does it have to do with playing faster? Yeah, so legato means smooth and connected. I thought it meant the cat. It, 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 it. it. Maybe also means the cat, I don't know. Uh, back to the music. But, but uh, yeah, so smooth and connected. So what this translates to on guitar or bass is when you're basically <clears throat> not picking every note. Okay, so for a beginner, this would be hammer-ons and pull-offs is, right. is, is a synonym in, on guitar. In first so position. I'm playing open and using the bone of my finger to hammer on. Now, 
Going back to Mary's question, yeah. we're nailing down this hand in isolation now. So mm -hmm. that when you go to play together, you don't have a weaker hand, you know what I mean? Right, right. And so um, just being able to do this with each finger, I mean, that's, that's a pretty solid exercise for a yeah. beginner, right? Just to get that familiar with the string and the fretboard. Uh, sorry, you should turn up. Yeah. And we should mention there's an entire course on right. hammer-ons, pull-offs, and all the styles of legato playing that you mm -hmm. can take. Of course, you'll run into it if you're on path. Um, and this gets us, this gets our notes to connect more, more, more smoothly. Is that that's the, what it is. So let's say, for, let's say you've been playing for a while. So this would be a great exercise. Uh, you might want to slow this down and watch it again. Pretty. So that's some sort of scale. Right. So <laughs> I don't even know what. And then you were only picking this the string every so often, right? Yeah. And using your fret hand. And, and in a real mechanized way. So in can, the can beginning. I, I'm sorry, but can I hear that with you like picking each note? Yeah, like not legato. So you start to hear separation. Correct. It's like a typewriter. Kind of that and continuing to build just a real mechanical. And the same thing here. The principle stays the same mm -hmm. no matter where you're at in your playing. So beginner, intermediate, or advanced, just apply these principles to your, to yeah. your level and, and you'll be fine. Well, you know, Adam Kimball says, what are the best, I knew someone was gonna ask this. What are the best picks to use and how do I oh, keep Adam. mine from spinning in my fingers You've while opened it up, Adam. Well, I'll tell you, when I couldn't keep up with Dylan on the 16th notes, I was actually thinking, man, I wish I'd used a thinner pick. Adam, there's a famous thing to blame it on the pick. No oh yeah, what happened. excellent tradesman blazes his tools all the time. Absolutely. No, uh, so no, what really? Uh, <laughs> I, I use heavy picks, but um, I have a really light hold. Oh. So, but I know a lot of people that use um, lighter picks and they say it helps them pick. But wait a minute, now you, use a, you, have, you, see you have a light hold, but do you drop the pick all the time? Because he's having a hard, he, it keeps spinning. I think it's like it's rotating yeah. from the. It, this, is a, this is a repetition game. We're trying to make this stuff reflexive. So you can tie your shoes have a conversation with a family member and watch the news at the same time because it's reflexive. It's built into your it's neural pathways. Right? Okay. I, I don't drop the pick because I've been holding it like so, this forever. Adam, it'll come to you. It'll come just to you. Just keep man. playing, keep yeah. playing in that, in that pickle. You'll, you'll, you'll start to like eventually just get the grip just right. Just trust it. Uh, Scott Vogelman on YouTube, as, as usual, has says, how long per day should we practice? Well, now this is, this is a little bit about the, about the path on fender play, really, right? in the streaks. It's kind of really interesting. So how, much minute, how many minutes a day can somebody reasonably, yeah. they've all got busy lives, yeah. uh, how much can they reasonably practice in a day? It's really about consistency. It's about day in and day out. And that has a lot to do with the neurology of learning. Can you consistently answer? my question oh, how many how many you see this is why i don't go to court <laughs> uh but no it, i would say 10 minutes a day is is a really there solid you go. get an egg round. timer set it for 10 minutes yeah in fact, you can probably make a nice boiled egg in that if you can too. get 20 minutes in you know some days that's awesome you know? that's almost twice as much practice <laughs> I'm not I a math. Told there would be no math. Hey, I'm no mathematician. <laughs> yeah. I'm no Don Haga. Uh, okay, so now it's humble brag time. No, uh, what's a okay? From I'm asking you folks out there, what's a fast song that made you feel proud when you got it up to speed? Where you thought I'm never gonna get, I'm never gonna play this. Whether I don't know whether it was the intro to Hotel California yeah. or it could have just been the melody to Mary Had a Little Lamb. Whatever it is, drop it in the comment section. Uh, you should be proud of yourself. We'd like to hear about it, and, we, and we'd like to give you some kudos. Uh, now. Uh, Let's go to day four. Is it day four. Oh, wait, 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 no. Should we uh, do the Glenn Campbell Oh, gag? we should do the, we have a Glenn Campbell Okay, so talk about Legato. Yeah. Here's just a, a little example. Here's a song from the, from the Fender Plays site. This is Glenn Campbell's Gentle on My Mind. I just grabbed this because it's such a lovely song. I'm going to play the melody on guitar, and I'm going to play it Legato. And uh, it's not a particularly fast song necessarily, but you're just going to hear how smooth the notes are uh, and how this, and the effect of when you, when you practice the stuff that Dylan's giving you for, in Legato, how it comes out in your playing. So uh, let's just, uh, you, you count it off, buddy. It's, it's, your, it's your, One, your call. One, two, three, four.
Mm. So there you go. So we're actually, we were both playing legato, actually. Yeah. So yeah. everything has this really smooth effect, this really gentle uh, effect. So thank you, Glenn Campbell, for that one. It's a way to play very expressively. Very expressively. Yeah, yeah. So now, day four. Mm. Day four. Oh, day, boy. Look, oh, it's... Dylan, we've been here for four days. I don't know. This is. We haven't changed clothes. I buddy. would have a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> you have like. Look, you've already grown up. I've beard. already grown a beard. <laughs> look you look guys. at this guy. That's it. Four days in. Woo. He's on hormones. Remington. Uh, okay, so songs people uh, that they, uh, hold on, wrote, uh, uh, songs that people got up to speed. Oh, Richard. Nope, it's gone. Well, I saw Here Comes the Sun. Did you? Yeah. Oh, right. I saw. I saw. It went, came and went. I, I saw Sweet Home Alabama. Too, oh, Sweet Home so. Alabama. That's yeah, a, that was, yeah, that's so you a good guys one. Got those anyway, those so, songs people got down fast. They were they were humbly bragging. Okay, so now we're at day four. All right. Oh no, yeah, Richard Mueller got Here Comes the Sun, mm -hmm. and James D. Lester Senior. He's the one who got Sweet Home Alabama. So great job, good for you guys. Yeah, I'm proud fantastic. of you. Fantastic. Uh, and I'm sure, and I'm sure you probably move on. To, you're probably ready to tackle on some challenge. It's maybe a little quicker. I hope yep. you are. Now, day four. I, uh, I often talk about slides as being a way of making your guitar sound more like the human voice. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, how how can sliding affect uh, people's playing to get faster? Yeah. So day four is sliding, right? And there's. There's just a ton of ways that sliding is used in guitar, so it's worthy of practicing it in isolation. Mm -hmm. right? So if you're brand new to guitar or within the brand new zone, you know, you're just gonna try to slide from maybe first fret to the third fret on each string with one finger. Of course, there's again courses on this on play. You might start on the second fret with your second finger. I'm going up two frets each time. You can tell there's a pattern here, your third finger might start at what's what's is it the breeders? What <laughs> He's like a jukebox, folks, you know? Uh, but for hours. So that's, that's if you're a beginner, right? Now, if you've already been playing for a while, you can still get a ton of practice out of sliding, right? So uh, let's take that pentatonic scale again. We'll move it up to, the, uh, to B minor. So mm -hmm. we've got... We're gonna slide up to the next position and back down from each note in the scale. So it's gonna be this. Hey, this is a good one for uh, Mr. Pinky Guy. Say that again. This is a good one for Mr. Pinky Guy. Absolutely, Pinky Guy. Are you kidding? Your pinky's gonna literally be able to lift <laughs> yeah. kilograms yeah, yeah. by the end of this. <laughs> like carrying wet towels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pinky, it's be awesome. No, but so if I picked this, it would sound like. And I'm going from the B minor pentatonic position up to the position above it. So. Okay. And if, if you slide it. Right? And you can really, you can just really That's get out of control wild. with this, right? Yeah. Uh, David Struving saying, this is such a cool show this week. I love it. David. Thank you, Thank you David. David, your Struving. checks, your checks on the mail, really, David. Really, Thank you. Thank you, David. Really appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so now let's move to day five. Day five. Day, if you made it this far. Day five. Oh, man, this is Thank so you. smooth. This is so smooth. We tend to think of rake, I, I think of rake picking, I hear that this term like rake picking, like it's like Yngwie Malmsteen and Eric Johnson, they do these beautiful sweeps of notes, it's like confetti of notes going on there. But we can rethink this, right? We can rethink this as an actual method of practice that'll help our playing be more expressive and eventually faster, is this right? Yeah, I, I, I can see if you're a beginner that there would immediately be intimidation by sweep or rake picking, but we're gonna show you how you can do it today. Could that have helped me Starting keep up with today. you on the... On the no. Nothing could have helped you. Nothing, nothing. Divine intervention. <laughs> uh, so, so let's say you know D chord. Let's say you're on path, right? You, you know D chord. If you hold each note in place, pick through it with all down picking, and then lift up after you've played it. And the Charge! main thing yeah, oh, is to let the pick rake through the strings. So the same principle would stay true for a larger arpeggio, right? So as you're moving through these, you're still going to be That's using the same think. technique. But it's the same thing. So for the same beginner, principle. just just uh, don't worry about. Well, I guess you have to coordinate the right and left hand, like like uh, someone like was, was talking about. Yeah, I mean this is going to be uh, in the beginning. Honestly, you, there's really no way around this. You have to start somewhere, okay. right? And this is something you already know how to do. The thing you're adding is all down strums where you don't ever lift off. Mm -hmm. You're just landing on the next string. Gotcha. So that's rake picking. Even at its most difficult level, it's the same concept. You know, uh, and then also I would say even, uh, and, and move it around, I mean, you could just take your index finger across three the top three strings and play that triad there. Yeah, absolutely. Go to play and grab any arpeggio. 
I and, think eventually. And, and you, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Uh, now, how does this all pay off? How does it all coalesce? How does it all come together? Yes. You know, <laughs> I don't have anything prepared, but uh, I think mm -hmm. that if I were to, uh, does anybody here play drums by any chance? OK. You. You, sir. Let's go. He's just a stranger with sticks. Let's do it. OK. Very nice. Well, wow. for an impromptu jam, not so bad. No, that was Cowboys from Hell. By Glen Campbell? By, no, by Pantera, which is on the site, of course. Oh, right, right, right. Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. Yeah. Uh, so, so you're doing everything there. I think just about every technique and then some that should never be repeated. <laughs> uh, you, you've got uh, sliding. <laughs> this is legato. The pinky? The pinky is certainly involved. Uh, there's uh, 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 hammering on. So it's literally every conceivable technique. And that's why we chose it. Don't bring your grandparents, maybe. <laughs> Maybe bring them. I don't know. I don't know. It's not you guys, my you gotta meet my grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so we, we have a couple of humble brags. Uh, uh, Andrea Windsor, I'm not your stepping stone by the monkeys. Oh, cool. oh man, that's really great. Yeah. Oh, I'm so I'm so very distorted. <laughs> Sorry about that. But and Daniel Vargas has he got the under the bridge. Oh intro. wow, Daniel. Good for you, Daniel. I hope that's you got, fantastic. You learned that on the Fender Play site. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And uh, William Galbraith on YouTube, the intro to Breaking the Law by Judas Priest. That's a great one too. Zach Gilman. Plush by STP. It's not the fastest, but it's fast enough for me. He Can says, I say something about that? We said it earlier. Now's today. not the time or place. Dang it. Go ahead. Uh, okay, but uh, here's the thing is when you're comparing your speed compared oh, to right. yourself yep. yesterday or the day before, not to other people, right? Because on that, on the latter metric of caring, uh, comparing it to other people, we're mm -hmm. all just going to, you know, be in a dismal failure. There's probably. always someone faster. Yeah, so it's really about where was I yesterday? That's and it. that's why this is a five day idea. That's it. That's yeah, a great. Trying to get a little bit better. Every Five day. days, so manageable. Also, by the way, all those songs that, that, that they just threw in the humble brags, those are all songs on the Fender Play site. So thank you so much for uh, for, for digging into there. Now uh, it's time to assign. So I mean, it's like this whole episode was kind of homework. It's really. basically so it's homework. Yeah. So what is the homework? It was just a recap of right. what we done. Day one. Day one is the uh, warm up warm on one, two, three, four, five, six strings. And if you've been playing for a while, you're going to be doing this. These other variations where you're skipping a string each note, or skipping. The... You might get some questions from the neighbors. Right. And yeah. then, right. And then yeah. day two, it's the pentatonic scale. Yeah. And we talked about this one, obviously, knowing the scale in open position if you're just starting out, or if you've been playing a while in the fifth position. Of course, these are all on play. Uh, and. It, I mean, the, the, the reason the pentatonic scale is, is just the space between the notes is just right. Yep. I yep. mean, it, it, it sounds lovely, but also the space between the notes is just right. So this is going to exercise that fret hand. Fix the hand. It's going to fix the hand, exactly. That's, yeah. that's why we're, we're going with that scale. Day three is legato. Legato. Yeah, so uh, first half of that is just being able to say the word. And second <laughs> half would be actually attempting to do some hammering on, right? So we were doing open to third fret. And this seems like rudimentary and basic and like you might get bored. Get bored. Like, oh, yeah, lean into it, chop the wood, be zenful about it, Ooh. because that's going to help you like just release everything from your day and just repeat something over and over again and, and, and you'll, you'll get some progress. You know what kind, of zen, uh, what kind of hot dog a Zen Buddhist likes? One with everything. Okay. That's for all the people staying up late in England. Can I validate parking now? 
All right, now we're going to go to day five, right? Are we at day five already? No, we're, no, day four. Hamilton. Day four. Oh, we've got, right. so day four is the sliding. We can slip and slide. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're taking your first finger on each string. And this is a great spot to use the metronome because a, oh, a big point. beginner thing is, is sliding too fast or mm -hmm. too slow. So if you've got your metronome going, let's say here, B. So you went you off a little more bit. time. Oh, yeah. Give yourself some time to get in position. So really start to be playful with that and be willing to be wrong and, and get go, hit back at it. Very, very good. You know? And then day five. That, day that's, five, that's the Rake Rooney. The Rake Rooney. Yeah, so uh, that's again, you're starting with that D chord and you're raking through the strings. And if you're uh, more advanced than that, grab any arpeggio mm -hmm. off of Fender Play and start raking through it. And you'll basically begin your journey of sweeping. I just want to remind everybody, of this show, even though we're live, we exist on the internet forever, as everything does. So you can always come back to this spot and go over the homework as Dylan's explained it. It's, it's up there all the yep. time. So let's talk about um, uh, another part of the, the homework we want to mention are your, your, the office hours, right? Absolutely. Who, who's there, who's so, there now? Uh, so if you're a member of Fender Play, you can join uh, the community, which is on Facebook, right? And uh, we have several different office hours that are going on. So on Thursday, we have Ozzy that's doing office hours and he's going to be focusing on soloing and then Barrett is going to be on Saturday and he's going to be taking all of your questions, anything, even uh, Barrett, what do you do to your hair? It looks amazing. Yeah. So you know, relevant clip, question. In that Corey Wong clip, I was clearly wearing a fright wig at the time. Yeah, I just. Also, Chuck Tamplin <laughs> says this is a really helpful lesson. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, well, Chuck. Well, well, you're welcome, Chuck, and thank you as well. Let's move on to the Fender Play segment now. Let's let's talk about. Uh, this is a pretty important part the of the show. itself. It, yeah, it's it's kind of why we're all here. We give something away. So all you got to do is be a member of Fender Play okay. and use it for a minimum of three seven-minute sessions, and you automatically get entered to win. Two steps. That's right. That's all. That's That's it. A, you don't need all five days. <laughs> uh, and, and you're automatically entered to win. And you get to pick from uh, prizes, basses, guitars, amplifiers. I mean, we really actually send these things right to your mm -hmm. door. Uh, and the more times you get uh, streaks, the more you're entered to win. So Isn't that something? Get entered over and over again. And do you guys want to know who won this week? Does anybody want to know? I think we do. I, I want to know. It's time to know. Give me a very fast E opening up to the winner. Here we go. Hup, hup. Oh, it's Gary B. Congratulations, Gary B. Look, you got on the board, Gary. Congratulations, uh, enjoy your new guitar, bass, ukulele, whatever it is you choose. Uh, wait for your confirmation email and then just follow suit. But way to go, way to go. Now, um, what is new on the Fender Play site? There's gotta, we update it all the time. What's, this is getting hard on? for me to narrow it down because there is so much that's new on the right, site. Right, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, so what am I gonna talk about? But there's new, I'll go for the songs, right? So uh, uh, we've got how, maybe I shouldn't set, you guys will recognize this. Go there. Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. Beautiful. Knows, yeah. It really is actually a really cool song. Yeah. Fantastic song. Uh, and then uh, I get carried away. I, uh, it's carried away by George Strait, which Classic. clearly I uh, like to sing in different keys. It's from the modern <laughs> jazz approach. It's very impressive. It's carried away by George. That's I hope George you, isn't watching. You try playing in one key and singing in another. Yeah. yeah. It's not that easy, man. And this guy can do it. Takes practice. And then uh, this uh, next one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Taylor Swift Mine by Taylor yeah. Swift. I believe it's a full song lesson, so you can get fully into that. In depth. Yes. Play along and everything. Cool. Well, thank you so much for helping everyone. Building speed on guitar. Thank you. Uh, for, uh, Dylan, a big hand for Dylan Calajuri. He Thank you. He goes through a lot. Thank you. Thank you. He's just a child. Yeah. He's just a child, ladies and gentlemen. Mentally. And he's, on, he's been on the road for 13 years. No, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for uh, lending your expertise to this. I know we talked about this a lot. So thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Yes. Uh, you know, to each of you watching, thank you again. And don't forget, Dylan, do you have something to plug? You know what I do, well, actually, Gene? Uh, there's a little thing called tone support in the community featuring moi. <laughs> there's one coming up on May 16th. I don't want to overstate this, but it might be the most important thing that's happening on the internet. I think it's not. I don't. I think that's potentially a good ever. I think that's so, a good estimate. Uh, oh, I don't know. I really love tone, and it's difficult for me to overstate how much. You're a tone I love lover. Tone. I wish there was that's some right. sort of depiction not, or picture. No, that's, because, oh, that's, that's the God, fight that is not what I was yeah. looking for. That's my impersonation of Marty Allen. That's Everybody, that's not it. I was looking for something that shows that. them how much I love tone. Uh -huh. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. That's it. Okay. Wow. I love Tone. Wow. Now, I want to show you guys everything I know about Tone. Um, well, kiss it, my pelt. In addition to making presets on your GTX or working with your pedals, and that's what this is. I'm in there all day on the 16th answering your questions. Uh, you're going to know more than you want to know. You're going to say, hey, stop. Right. That's enough. Too much. That's too much. It's a gallon poured into a shot glass. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, come to the community on the 16th and also show up for the office hours that are coming up too, Thursday and, and Saturday. Fantastic. Thank you, Dylan. To each of you uh, watching, thank you again. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comment section. It's just right there next to the chat window. Until next week, I want you to keep safe, keep practicing. By the way, that guy got in my head. I dropped a pick halfway through that song. <laughs> <laughs> Just went flying. Okay, they, I, yeah. Hey. yeah, thank you so much. Anyway, keep safe, keep practicing, <laughs> keep holding on to that pick, and we'll see you next week at the same time. Say that channel, big G chord, or tap, type a capital G in the comment section, and we're we'll get out of here. One, two, three, four, go!